<laughs> I'm Angelica Michel. I'm the owner and operator of Spicy Mama Salsas. I make homemade authentic salsas to add some spice to your life. I started this originally as a hobby, actually more of an experiment. I just bought a house and the pandemic hit, so stuck at home a lot, just like everyone. So I started a garden and from the garden, I had all these peppers and tomatoes and I just started making salsas just like my mom and my grandma did. And from there, people asked if they could buy it. So a hobby became a passion and a passion became a business. And yeah, that's how Spicy Mama was kind of created. You make it sound so simple. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, and did you ever doubt yourself? Were you scared? How did you know which steps to take? Which way you're going? Okay, well, I will say it wasn't a simple process. It was more of a step-by-step -step process. Like, okay, baby steps. I did this, now what's the next thing? So first, well, you know, making the salsas, getting people to taste them. And then people said like, you should sell it. So started taking it to work, to family gatherings. I'm like, okay, what do you think? Would you buy this? How much would you pay for it? Just kind of just putting it out there. And then coming up with a business name that I, I tossed around in my head for like a few months. So it wasn't like a step-by-step, -step, you know, back to back. It's literally something I just learned all the way. Um, there were some struggles especially with you know res registering that business and you know how to run a business because i know how to make the salsas i know how to sell them but when it comes to like marketing um booking uh bookkeeping i mean and just like having a whole business plan together that's where i kind of struggled but it's kind of worth that struggle because the the success I feel like selling a jar to someone and then saying this is amazing, it's worth it. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so you were stuck somewhere. I mean, you were trying to figure out the business plan or how you were going to sell. How did you dive into that, and how did you find solution? I I guess I should say I allowed myself to have opportunities. I allowed a space where people could like come to me and almost have the solution for me without even telling the problem. Be like, uh, I had somebody come up to my table and say, hey, I do brand marketing. I'm like, that is great. I need help with that. <laughs> like creating a brand and, you know, putting something out there that's visually appealing for people because it just, it's not just about what's in the jar now. It's kind of what you put on the outside, what it means. And um, another situation I suppose would be um, like a bookkeeper. I had a friend she's like, who had her own business too. She was like, oh, I have an accountant, that's great. And I'm like, I'm actually looking for someone to help me with my bookkeeping. So a lot of the solutions kind of just naturally came because I wasn't a, almost afraid to put it out there that I needed help. It's allowing yourself to ask for help versus thinking I could do this all by myself. Nice. So is that your personality? Do things just come easy for you? Are you just a really smart person? <laughs> <laughs> how did you learn that you could ask? How did you trust that you could ask for help? How did you know that? I mean, the worst thing that could happen is saying someone saying, no, I don't know, or I can't help. And then you kind of just move on. It's kind of over overcoming the fear of just asking for help again. Because yeah. we tend to think that we can do it all on our own, that we have to have it all gathered together. But it's, it's a baby step process. You know, take things one, at, one day at a time and allowing yourself to, you know, put yourself out there. Just experiment, try new things. The worst case scenario, someone says no and then you just move on. Great. Okay. okay, so it originally started as a garden and making to the salsas, but as the business grew, so did the demand grow, grew, so I couldn't, really my garden couldn't keep up with me. So I had to outsource, and the best outsource is your local farmers. And that's where I started reaching out to different farms and seeing who could, you know, provide different uh, produce, and it's crazy the different variations of produce you can get. I always had... I could get tomatoes, but all the tomatoes were always different and it changed the flavor of the salsa, which 
I think it's good. Some people want that consistency, but I love that you can try a salsa with the same ingredients, but still taste different. Where do you sell your produce, your salsas? salsas? Right now with my salsas, I sell them at farmer's markets and kind of just do pop-ups throughout the city. But farmer's markets seem to be my consistent um, marketing area just because people know when they come to a farmer's market, they're gonna get something that's local, something that's handmade, something that's authentic. So I, that's why I love staying at farmer's markets because I feel like not only is a place for um, businesses to grow, but also it's a place to connect with the community. I will say there were some challenges with this business. Uh, they came a point where there was a lot of demand for the salsa and people kept asking me to be, you know, in their farmer's market or if I could pop up um, at their store or at their location. And I tend to be a yes person and overbook myself, sometimes double book myself, which I know it's not a bad thing, you know, to be over, to be booked, but it is when you don't know how to create a balance for yourself. You know, I've learned as a business owner now, I have to create time for my business and also have to create time for myself. And that's something I do encourage people to do, just don't forget to create time for yourself. I do encourage people to go out to your local farmer's market at least once. It's it's something that you would feel good about because you know you're going to support you know, a local business, someone who's building something for themselves. And even if it's to go in to just buy a jar or you know an apple from the farmer's table, you know you know you feel good because you know where that money is going. You know it's going to someone. Who is trying to you know create something for themselves and the community uh advice i would give i would even say to my younger self you know or to you if you're still in that early age where you know life is kind of scary you don't know you know if it's this is the right thing for you i will say you will never know until you try you just have to you know take a leap of faith try things out. If it doesn't work out, you can at least say you tried and move on to the next thing. Don't be afraid to try to try new things. Um, even though I, you know, have a salsa business, I still have a lot of other projects I do on the side. And it's kind of just figuring out who you are and what brings you joy and happiness and fulfills, you know, your day. This actually connects about five years ago. If you asked me, you know, if I would have a salsa business, I would say no. I wasn't really in tune with my culture. I didn't even speak that much Spanish, even though I know it, just because the culture around me, you know, it was you speak English and you kind of just stick to what you know. And, you know, making salsa started not only a business, but also a fire inside that led me to be connected more to my culture, to speak more Spanish and, you know, to learn different types um, of salsas and the process of them, the history of them, you know, how far back in time they go. And I feel like it's really opened my eyes. I am a different person and that's a good thing.